Welcome to the Integrate Yourself Podcast with Allison and Maya. You're listening to Episode 2. You can find out more about what I do at pureenergypdx.com and more about what Maya does at mayagotlib.com. Welcome to Integrate Yourself with Allison and Maya. Today we're going to talk about how to make anger your friend. And on the other end of the spectrum, how victimhood can be paralyzing. So you have anger on one end, which is um, sometimes expressed healthy, sometimes not. Uh, Maya and I discuss how anger needs to be expressed, but we don't want to stay in the anger state. So how to identify where the anger is coming from, maybe how to go about uh, transforming that energy into something that's more empowering. And I think that's really, um, I thought about this a lot lately just because of everything that's going on in the world. I'm actually seeing people that are really angry because of the president in the United, of the United States. I, I don't know, you know, I, I can only speak for what's going on here. And I think there's um, a lot of frustration and, and people are feeling a little out of control. And so they're, you know, they're getting angry about it. They're blaming others. Some of them are becoming victims. So I felt like this would is a really important topic to discuss today. And giving, I, I'd like to really help people by giving people ideas on how you can actually get yourself out of that that hole um, of either being really stressed out and angry and or blaming others for the state that you're in and just um, you know and, and getting into the passive aggressive thing and all of that so um, how do we express ourselves in a healthy way um, and, and I think that's more about awareness mindfulness around what's going on within you and then choosing to take that energy or, and that information and make it something that's um, giving you more I guess choice and, and more options about how you can use it. Are you going to use it to help yourself? Most likely yes if you know what's going on. Most people will transform that energy into something really good. But if we stay stuck in that anger mode, then we'll never really be able to um, see it from that other's perspective. Um, a lot of times I've found too that there's things that you perceive that other people may not have even meant or their, their intention wasn't what you thought it was or it wasn't even personal, but we take it personally. And, the, and so... Therefore, you know, you get triggered. It's what we call getting triggered. So when you get triggered, it's, I think it, for me anyway, it's more about, okay, instead of blaming that other person for pissing you off, I would say it's more about you are, you know, why are you getting triggered? What What is happening there? Why, why did, you know, that is something that, to me, I guess it's something that needs to be brought up. Uh, within you just needs to be there's something within you that needs some attention so that's the way I like like to look at and hopefully that's helpful to you too so Maya has done a great job in this podcast and expressing uh, this process in a really articulate way that uh, is easy to understand and follow so um, I really am so happy to be sharing this and and I apologize in advance for all the um, background noise and distractions that have happened on my end. I actually had some technical difficulties um, and a lot going on in my house that day for whatever reason. So um, please bear with me on that end. But uh, with that being said, the as imperfect as it is, it's kind of perfect because uh, there's some really, really uh, fantastic information on there. And I think I think Maya again. I'll say she just she expresses it so well. So. Uh, Sit back, enjoy, and uh, take it all in. Uh, One thing I'll say before I go on to the podcast is uh, Maya and I are both 
holistic uh, health and life coaches. We special I specialize in and more of personal training, holistic personal training and nutrition and lifestyle coaching. And she helps people with as an LMT, a licensed massage therapist um, and a holistic life and nutrition coach. So we both have very similar backgrounds and that's why we came together to share this podcast so we can share the information that we've both shared together out into the world. So thank you so much for listening. Okay, so Maya, Maya and I are here today uh, and we're going to be talking about uh, victimhood and there's a lot of that going on in the world right now. I'm noticing a lot of anger, a lot of anxiety, a lot of people feeling uh, blaming others for, for what's going on, uh, which is I totally get that. I totally understand. I've done it many times myself. I think it's it's okay to be in that uh for a second, but then there's a process of getting yourself out of that victimhood and empowering yourself. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit more about that, uh, get a little deeper into that subject. Um, and uh, with that, I'm going to uh, introduce Maya into the into the mix. And um, what do you have to say about that, Maya? What do you want to start that off with? <laughs> How do you want to start that discussion, I guess? Um, for me, I think, uh, what I heard you say was, uh, how we make anger our friend and, um, in terms of the, 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 the things that, uh, describe, uh, anger and is a projection of an, an emotion. So we're usually never really angry about what we're angry about. We're never really upset about what we think we're upset about. There's something underneath it. And if we can back up and see the emotional part of what's causing the anger so if you have a moment where you can say okay I'm in this anger and then kind of watch yourself and say okay what am I really angry about and then from there you can then find like a way out of the reactive behavior and become more responsive to what your needs are Um, so if we say you have misdirected anger and your expression is fear and shame behind that because something else that you didn't really connect the dots to um, the the thing is, is you'll start to want to keep um, going on in the anger and it gets you lost in some kind of version of a story, but it's not going to then help you a way to release and figure out, wait, what am I really angry about? So, um, uh, you know, I think it also reveals a lot of the behavior if you're going to create. So fight, fight, freeze and facade other responses of any kind of um, action of some kind of thing that's you know happened to you or you feel is an external thing that came to you and said hey you did this to me and it's you know your fault and and then you kind of lose control for that moment of time because you're feeling that fear and shame but you don't really know what you're really angry about so um I think that's a good place to start from there. What do you? Yeah, I agree. That's that's great. Um, yeah, so just identifying where the anger is coming from, what what the trigger is all about. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. I mean, anger is 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 natural, but it's also how long and how often do you want to stay in there. So, um, if you get angry and then you can walk away for whatever that was great because you don't want to suppress the anger you want to be able to get connected to it and not get lost within it yes I I totally agree I think that is excellent advice Um, and it's worked you know well for me in my life as well that's a great point that you made uh, with the anger is not hanging on to it or stuffing it down and actually bringing it out which is very healthy but not staying in that anger you know just transforming that energy into something else and something that can be healing for you because you know most likely if it's coming out in an angry way it's probably been there for a little while don't you think absolutely i mean if you think about someone who's incredibly angry right their their energy is exploded and they're loud and they're reactive and they're making themselves quite 
like bigger than they may, may be at the, in their natural state. So they're really, you know, causing an intimidation or they start interrogating or they put themselves in a place where they're protecting themselves, but outwardly very aggressive. And then you can have like a passive behavior where you are angry, but then you're pathetic and hiding. So you get you get in the way of, you know, one spectrum or the other, right? So like, I, I'm not going to tell you what I'm angry about, you know, and I, then I'm going to get into that, what we call the victimization stage, where, you know, it's then, you know, that suppression. And so from what I understand, you know, if you can't express your anger in a healthy way, then you become, you in in, inhale it in may, and take it in and then become maybe sad or even depressed after that because it's that inability of you to express the anger in a healthy way and you know so you won't deal with it you won't go there you'll just say I don't want to see myself become this expa- you know, expansive person that's probably out of control perceived you know because of this inability to contain myself and so then the shame might come around and say oh yes don't do that you are not allowed to show your anger how that's not you know that's not proper or or maybe even triggers you when you're a kid when your parents shut you down and said hey I'm your parent, listen to me. And you had no recourse of saying, wait, my my expression of anger is healthy, you know? And it, and it all has to do with a little bit of survival, right? Like Absolutely. your parents are trying to say, hey, I can't deal with you right now. You don't hear that. You just hear them shutting you down. So your pattern keeps coming out where you're kind of telling yourself, oh, I better not show my anger. I better not show anger. And then you start to learn how to manipulate yourself and others in this kind of dance of passive aggressive, right? So kind of coming back to like, where are you putting yourself in? Like, a, are you angling yourself into a victimization, victimization stage so that you can allow yourself to um, feel the anger internally, but not express it? Yeah. And I'd like to talk a little bit more about the victimhood thing, because I, I feel like uh, that is a that's a slippery slope. I, I think there's so many people that fall into that and they may not even realize they're doing that. Um, and, you know, I, I think women sometimes fall into that really easily too, because we don't feel like we always have a voice. And so we, uh, go the passive aggressive route or we blame, or we, uh, you know, there's anxiety around that too, and getting uh, irritated at people and um, I think recognizing that you're doing that when you're getting really irritated all the time at other people or you're, do, or you're blaming a lot of people for what's going on with you, then I think that's something to really stand back and look at and say, hey, wait a minute, uh, that shouldn't be happening. Like there's something else going on here and it's maybe how I'm looking at the world instead of what other people are doing to me all the time. Um, and so I think uh, that can be very empowering as well uh, to realize that. Can you talk, Maya, a little bit more about um, the victimhood state and how we, how we could take steps to, to get out of that victimhood state and, and how, or actually, you know, you just talked about how to recognize it, um, and, but how could, we, how could we, you know, develop strategies to just start getting out of that, that dark hole of passive aggressiveness. I, I believe like for what I've learned is, is is taking ownership of all your emotions. Like if you really think about how often we um, categorize these are good motion, emotions, these are bad emotions. So we end up seeing ourselves in these spectrums of this is the, the correct behavior and this is not so correct behavior. And so then um, we may Um, utilize that um, to help us develop even more of like a, um, you know, being too sensitive to maybe a one-upmanship 
or we might do a righteousness or sarcasm or maybe even dumbing self ourselves down. Um, but then, you know, in on th- that feeling of pressure of feeling not so great about ourselves, we go into condensation, condescension, um, blaming self or others. And then, you know, we never really can get to the aspect of, you know, really um, owning that, yes, let me declare I'm angry, you know, and what I would want to know for myself is how, how I've taught myself not to see my anger and, and not be able to say to myself, okay, it's okay for me to have that anger. It's absolutely uh, an authentic place for me to be at this moment. Now, like what we were talking about is when do you come to that place of saying, okay, I've maybe had that much time to be angry. Now I come through and I say, what am I doing with this anger? Like, am I even hearing half the story? Do I even see what my participation is in that anger? So we kind of slowly claim our power back and then we kind of can then look at did we fight fair or did we fight dirty did we come from a place of blaming or did we come from a place of um of manipulation you know um so that you know if i get angry i know that you don't like it so i'll do it more so that i can get my way or i can uh, you know trigger you without really knowing that you know maybe parts of you had experienced when you were a kid and so that ownership of like how did you play your part in that moment kind of gives you that understanding of hey I'm going to reclaim what I'm giving away. I'm giving my energy out to you because I'm so angry. And so that person can actually take you for even longer ride than you really wanted to. Or you can say, hey, I need everyone to know that I'm an angry person. Uh, I know because that way I can feel comfortable in control. So basically we're, we're heading right into how do you want to, take responsibility for your emotions and how do you want to take responsibility of those um, times that that we're out of control and the perception of control you know what came to me when you said that is it's about is totally about control that came to my mind too like uh, being angry is a form of being in control and and blaming is also a form of being in control um because you don't really actually have to own your own actions like you said when it comes to other people you don't have to look at why you got angry you know it was that other person that's what made you angry it was them not had nothing to do with you right so i think that um i think that it's it's more about like like you said as well earlier it's about responding instead of reacting. It's like if you're reacting at everything and you can't control yourself and you, you know, you're actually harming yourself as well because you're getting the stress hormones going. And every time you do that, um, and it's just not, it's not a healthy thing to do. It's not a thing. Also people want to be around a lot. So, Um, But I I kind of feel like with everything that's going on in the world right now, there's a lot of anger going on. And and I the whole main reason I wanted to to talk about this is is partly because of that and and to give people a different perspective on how they could look at at maybe uh, maybe they're getting angry because they don't feel like they have any control in the world right now. Things are happening in the world that they just that are out of their hands and. Um, and that may be true, but the truth is, is that you can actually gain control in your own life by, by looking at it from our perspective. Um, I think it, it's very helpful. So if you can look at the things that could be, you know, this can also work with relationships. Of course, if you're in an intimate relationship with someone, someone is going to trigger you all the time, right? It doesn't matter how great your relationship is. You're still going to get triggered by them, but you can also use this, um, for the world. So like, you know, with polit- politics and those kind of things. So if something's triggering you politically or, or, um, you know, you can look at that and say, well, why is that triggering me? Um, you know, why am I getting angry about that? Is there something going on on a deeper level with me? Um, 
that, you know, is that the reason that's happening? And can I change this? How can I change this? How can I change my mindset? How can I look at this differently? So I think that's the first step for sure. Well, I mean, if we want to give stages of how to do it, I mean, once you get a awareness of the body, like, you know, when you're mad, you can feel your body excitatorily going, like, you know, your temperature is rising, your, um, your, your voice is louder than you may be, um, arms may be moving around or whatever is, however you do an anger and you feel that tension. And, you know, if you're doing it where you're not showing your anger, then you can kind of feel it in your body even too, because there's tension like neck pain or there's, um, you know, uh, back pain or there's even deeper la layers of like, um, if you're, you know, l having liver issues or some kind of um, kin kidney or, you know, you can look into Chinese medicine and they'll tell you every organ is connected to an emotion. So if we look at, you know, just taking a breath, it's calming our, our breath down allowing ourselves to um, talk in a more softer voice and you will start to calm that inner anger and then without like suppressing it into let's just shut it down not hear of ourselves then you can start asking the questions like what does this mean to me um, you know uh, what does this person represent in my life um, what is it that I uh, what is my outcome what is it I really want to convey but not being able to get to because I'm feeling some kind of shame or I feel that um, you know um, I cannot honor uh, uh, something that I might have misperceived and you know so you know um, I think those are stages that we can start to say to ourselves are l like baby steps to reclaiming what we want to do in terms of um, our responsibility of how we um, perceive ourselves and our perception of others. I'll add to that, uh, you know, intuition, using intuition or intuitive, like start to practice intuitive practices, I guess is how I'll say that. Um, as you develop that in yourself um, and you start, um, I wanted to actually touch on this because I heard you say this a while back and, and it just was like, yeah, like taking ownership, you know, and um, not just going with a, a plan or strategy that people tell you to do or that you feel like you have to do because everybody else is doing it. Actually developing your own, your own voice within yourself uh, can be really powerful um, at, uh, you know, helping, helping with this and, and getting out of the victimhood state especially. Um, and even, you know, any kind of irritation like that, it really, I think irritation stems from, from just being irritated with yourself for not actually, you know, taking ownership of stuff in some, in some form or another, or not giving yourself the time and space to, that you need. Um, and so, um, I think, uh, a great way to do that, like you said, like, look, you know, look towards your body, see how your body's responding to to uh, decisions that you're making. If you're saying yes to things that you know you really don't want to be doing, then what is your body doing? Is it curling up? Um, or is it actually just straightening up and you feel powerful when you are when you make this decision? You know, there's a couple, I mean, it's very subtle, but it actually, it, it works. And, and your body, you know, your body language is, is like so powerful. It's so, it'll tell you right away um, if, if what you're doing is the right thing. And if, especially if you're connected to that. So, um, you know, I think that's a, another great way to start developing your intuition if you're in tune with your body, especially, but, um, but there's other ways too. And everybody picks up on that kind of information differently. But, um, but I think for health reasons, I think being able to be in tune with your body is super important. Right. And, um, and that's probably where we would probably want to go into of what, what do you, what do you know about yourself? Like, uh, you know, like, do you even have an awareness of, um, you know, what your body tells you on a daily notion? Like, okay, you know, I wake up in the morning, I, do I feel 
um, I'm connected to the ground when I wait, when I'm up in the more do I walk away walk, when I wake up and I'm just uh, already in my head about all the things I need to do um, you know am I walking into you know just another day of the same thing and I don't you know get a moment of, of a breath or a moment of a pause and taking pauses can be like simple like uh, you know, as taking like a couple of breaths or sitting still for just a second and connecting to yourself. And what that will do is allow your centering to come to and then, you know, calming the, the voices in your head. And now if we go into a, a physical, um, like physically, you're, you know, dealing with a lot of uh, low energy, you don't know um, the difference between, uh, you know, have you uh, eaten enough in, in the day for your body and how your body is responding to the food that you're taking. Um, these are other steps that, you know, uh, we both can help um, individuals do with a little bit of just simple t- taking your temperature and pulse, knowing how you're going to work um, your your uh, your day in in, in 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 chunks that you can say to yourself, oh, yeah, I know today, you know, I didn't eat so well in the morning, so you know, I know why I didn't have enough energy at night, and so maybe I slept a little off, and then I wake up in the morning and I'm. Yeah, I'm okay, but I'm just not that person that I like to feel, you know. And one of the things I noticed in intuition is intuition has a lot to do with, um, you know, connection to oneself. And so the more you um, work on that intuition in terms of like taking a moment, taking a pause um, in your day and and, and, and then maybe, um, you know, really checking in on yourself, you really can create a connection that, you know, doesn't bring self-doubt or doesn't allow you to say, well, was that really right? Is my intuition working? And and I say from my own personal experience, you know, you, you go through waves, right? And I notice those waves of, oh, you know, if I had connected the dots, I wasn't in a very good space that day. And no wonder I was a little distracted or I didn't feel my intuition was plain, you know, but clear enough for me. So um, I would say for others that are really trying to set into what it means, intuition, I think you you really first can go into how do you feel in your body? Yes, definitely. And I think that um, just actually feeling that first is huge. It's a huge first thing to do. I, I think that's the first step. Um, but yeah, you touched on some really, really really wonderful points. And I think it's, those can be, um, actually we can lead into for next time, the physiology of the body and how that responds to certain stresses you're putting on it. Um, and I'd like to get into that deeper on the next one. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, so much in your body can be controlled by your breath, by just taking space for yourself. Um, one thing I like to do is go for a long walk out in a, in a place where I can have access to nature is preferable, but it doesn't have to be that way. And then, um, you know, going out for a walk and it actually the walking without any kind of distraction, no headphones, um, no, uh, you know, no podcast, no, any, nothing like that. And just, just being able to process, just being able to process, uh, having that processing time while I'm walking is, is, it is like, has helped me so much. It's almost like, it's almost like my moving meditation. It's like my moving meditation. I'm just walking. I'm out in nature. I'm, I don't have any distractions. And it helps me, uh, with the things that I've been trying to process during the day or think through or decisions I've been trying to make. Um, it actually gives me more clarity. So just giving yourself that space is a big deal. Absolutely. So I, I think, uh, I think we're going to wrap it up. Uh, thanks Maya for, for doing this with me again. And, um, next time we will talk more about, uh, the physiology of the body. We're going to get into a little bit more of the hormone balancing aspect of that. Well, it was great talking with you again and we'll, uh, see you the next time. Okay. Thanks Maya. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. So if you liked what you heard, please subscribe to our podcast on iTunes. 
and share it with your friends. Thanks again for listening. Tune in to us next month when we talk about hormonal balancing, how that affects your physiology, your body physiology, as well as your emotional state. And also we'll be talking a lot about, um, actually I want to talk about estrogen and how that is a stimulant. And it's, it's very interesting. We rarely think of estrogen this way, but it actually has a huge effect on our body's physiology and the way we we respond emotionally, how it can uh, affect your response to certain situations in life, how you handle stress, as well as um, how it affects your health overall over time. So we'll be talking about that and it'll be pretty interesting and I hope you tune in. Until then, be well. (music) Thank <music> you.